All right, welcome to Relationship Essentials. Uh, we're excited to talk about kingdom and godly way of doing relationships, um, godly perspective on sex, marriage, dating, anything relationship, because we believe that doing things the way God designed it is the surest and fastest way to success. And I think every single person, no matter what point in our journey we are, desire success. Now, just because we desire something doesn't mean we are going to get it, mm -hmm. right? Because you can have the destination right, but your map could be wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think when it comes to relationship, a lot of people desire success, but their map is wrong. So yeah. you see that even though they, everything they want doesn't show up in their relationship. Um, and what our platform is all about is kind of stirring people back on the path um, that leads to, is my microphone working? Because I feel like it's not working. It's working, everybody can hear me? Good? All right. If you guys could just turn me up a little bit. Um, but ultimately, our goal with this platform is to create an opportunity for people to have raw, authentic conversations when relationship is concerned. Um, growing up, um, I didn't have that. You know, I had parents that loved me. They loved Jesus. I was I grew up in a church, in literally in a church, because both my parents are pastors. But I still didn't understand what it took to have a healthy relationship because um, it it's become clear to me. Like you look at things like, you know, Solomon as wise as he was failed a relationship. David as as godly as he was failed a relationship. Mm -hmm. Samson as strong as he was failed a relationship. So what I've come to learn or understand is if you're going to succeed in the area of relationship, it has to be something that you are intentional about. It has to be a skill that you actually take time to cultivate because it doesn't just, we don't become great at it naturally. And the other thing is we typically think whatever we do more of, we are good at it. But that is not true, right? A lot of people because think, all right, I just run, so I'm good at running. But that is not true. If you run against someone that trains to run, you will realize how bad you are at running, right? Simple things like breathing. We breathe. But most of us don't know how to breathe, right? So if most of them, when they go to therapy, actually they start teaching them how to breathe, especially when they come into a stressful moment. So a lot of things that we do on a regular basis become so mundane that we think we are good at it because we do it so often, but it actually requires skills. And I think in the area of relationship, it requires more skills than our culture or society have led us to believe. And I think it's God, God's plan is in, is in his book. Is the design is there, and we just have to open up the Bible and, and learn how relationship is supposed to be done. So we have some questions. Typically, our questions are from those of you that leave comments on the YouTube channel or send us a DM or send us an email or those of us that are in the audience that would probably come up here today or just wrote down your questions. We're going to try to address those questions. And the goal, obviously, is to help you get better in doing relationship the godly way. All right? So, all right. Let me introduce you guys to Julia. Julia, you want to say a little bit about yourself? Hi, guys. <laughs> um, what's up? What's up? Welcome to today's episode. My name is Juliette Amwa. Um, I'm the COO of Relationship Essentials. Super excited to have you guys join us on today's episode, and I'm excited to get into the questions. So hopefully we answer some of y'all questions, and if not, again, just let us know. We'll be sure to answer it on the next one. So, all right, I'm going to give the first question. All right. all right. So the first question that was written down is, what should believers focus on when selecting destiny partners? So what are some of the criteria? Um, I now I will, I will, I I'm, I'm guessing the person is speaking about marriage. Right? Yeah, this because is the a destiny of partner could be someone that you're not married to, mm -hmm. and I think that's something people don't realize, right? Yeah, like when we pray for our destiny partners, mm -hmm. they don't necessarily come in the form of our husband or, or romantic, our wife, right? Because God can send. Like you look at the life of David, mm -hmm. who was who was the most instrumental in his journey to being a king. Mm -hmm. Jonathan. Mm, and good. Jonathan is a man. Yeah, that's good. The Bible even said they were soulmates. Mm, that's a good perspective. So I think one yeah. perspective is your soul, your destiny prayer hub. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, woo! Everybody has soulmates. <laughs> your destiny your destiny <laughs> helper doesn't necessarily come in the form of a, a husband, right? Right. And a we wife. talked about right. this in DC, right? Where mm -hmm. we said we have to normalize 
platonic Christian mm-hmm. friendships yep. with the opposite sex because sometimes we have people dating their assignments mm. where the people That's that good. you know God has sent for you to help grow yeah. you are being romantic with them and yeah. you typically cannot leave someone that you're too close with yeah or, you know, so I guess in this context they're talking in regards r- to marriage marriage right? yeah. alright so now if you're talking marriage right I think like the safest path mm-hmm. right because there's so many variables that people will tell you oh, look for this look for that look mm-hmm. for that right but this I like to teach principles and there's a principle called the law of first. So in the scriptures, anytime you want to learn how to handle anything, you go back to the first time it was introduced. Anytime something is first introduced, it tells you how you should handle it. Something as simple as creation, right? So even in how God created the earth, God is teaching us how to work. So God literally says he worked six days. He rested, he rested what? On the seventh day. Mm-hmm. That means when you start creating the life that you want to create, you're not being like your creator. You are probably going to burn out. You're probably going to be stressed out. You're probably going to get some kind of disease. The blueprint is there. The other thing we see in creation is consecrate, concentration. God concentrates on one day he creates something, second day. So we see the blueprint. So when it comes to marriage, right, for us to understand how to pick, we got to look at the first husband and the first wife that God made, mm. right? Um, so when it comes to picking your destiny partner, so going back to the first husband, what did the first husband look like? So in, in a nutshell, the first husband, number one, is God gave him identity. So the man that you should date is not a man that hasn't discovered himself. Mm-hmm. He's not a man that is still confused about his identity. He's not still trying to figure out the faith thing now. Mm-hmm. You know? So he has an identity that is rooted in God. Because the problem that men started facing started, that started when man left Eden. Do you realize that? Mm. All the, all the things that, man, that came upon man was when man was sent out of Eden. So that first man is the blueprint of the type of husband that God wants for us. So one for you guys, not for, not for, <laughs> not for us, for, for you guys. All right. So the first man had identity that is rooted in God. Mm-hmm. Then he had an assignment, right? We always talk about income. I tell women not to date men for money, but date a man that knows his assignment, has a vision, and actually have a work ethic attached to the vision because Adam was working before God gave him a woman. So he was not lazy. He was working. As a matter of fact, the Bible says it was when he finished working that God put him in deep sleep. You don't sleep when you didn't work. Mm. All right? So so don't date a lazy man and say he, he has a vision. No. He got to be Some working. Some don't be sleeping and they don't work, though. Yeah, I'm that's telling you, that's <laughs> the problem. <laughs> Even like there's a, there's a place in the scriptures, right? Proverbs says, that he that loves sleep, mm-hmm. poverty will creep into the bed yep. and lay with him. Yep. All right, so you, like, the, Bible, <laughs> the Bible addresses that yeah. too. So, and I think the other part is um, Adam had, and I think even for me, as, as I've matured, whatever man needs to have is the ability to cultivate the woman. You have to make the woman that God sends into your life more spiritual and better mm-hmm. than she was before she was introduced to you. That's why people always make the comments, God didn't give women the law, God gave it to the man, and the man had to teach the woman. So we have a culture now where women want, most households, the woman is more spiritual than the man. Mm-hmm. And that's why we have the problems we have. So for the man, that's what I will focus on. And then for the woman, I would say God said, I will make him what? A help what? Not make me. Mm-hmm. That means a woman that is not, I tell men, a woman that is, married to the vision that she has and not willing to surrender it to your vision or to your path is not the woman for you, mm-hmm. right? Part of that word, help me, speaks to the flexibility of the woman. The woman have the ability to be flexible. The woman have the ability to take whatever she's been given and make it better. So a woman has the ability to come in and say, Whatever vision God has given you, not just when it comes to finances. Talk about mm-hmm. the first vision that God gave men was to go and dominate the earth. So that woman also has to know God because how can she help build a kingdom that she doesn't know about? Mm-hmm. So, like, again, I would just go back to the first husband and the first woman and look at the characteristics that they had when you were picking. It's good. Good, good, good. All right, let's tap it up for that question. That was good. That was a good response, too. All right, so our second question is, there are many men and women who say they are devout Christians but have chosen to no longer wait until they are married to have sex. 
And when we talk about purity, we're not just talking about in the sense of penetration sex, but sexting, oral, hand sex, phone sex, lesbian sex, all types of sex. They just messing it up. So what should we do? Because this is, this is honestly, I mean, all jokes aside, this is what's happening, right? So people say, oh, well, I'm not having sex, but you're doing everything else, right? And we can all say we've been guilty of that. So in that situation, what should, what kind of advice would you give this person that says, I'm not having sex, but I'm sexting and doing everything other than penetration? Um, so I talked about this earlier in the previous episode, the first episode I shot today. So when we think about someone that it's, it's almost as if, how much can I get close to sin mm. without sinning? Yeah. Right. That means your your goal is already wrong. <laughs> you're you're f- pursuing the wrong wrong goal. Now we all have our desires, right? We all have our human tendencies. Mm-hmm. But now I think for me, what I've come to learn that's helping me is understanding that we are spirit beings, mm-hmm. and there are certain things that open doors to t- demonic influences. Now I think a lot of Christians don't like to think of themselves as being demonically influenced because it, it sounds bad. Like, oh, I was influenced by a demon. But it's a real thing because we are spirit beings at the core of our being. So there are certain things, for example, um, masturbation. You are not penetrating anybody, but f- um, masturbation opens you up to demonic influences. Mm-hmm. And one of, one of the things that I tell people, when you study demons, demon, when demons come, they don't come alone. They often come like a gang, yeah. right? So my biggest thing I would tell the person is, right, the Bible says those that walk in the, in, after the spirit will fulfill the works of the spirit. And those that work after the flesh will fulfill the works of the flesh. What I, one of the easiest ways I've come to understand it is this. What is the number one plan of the enemy when it comes to sex, anything that he's trying to do that's not contrary, that's contrary to the, the will of God? is to make, he's a, he's a rebel. Mm-hmm. The devil was cast out of heaven because he rebelled. He started a rebellion. He said, I will, I send my throne to that of God. So rebellion is his nature. So the number one thing he wants to create in a Christian life is to what? To, f- to make you one of his, to be rebelling, right? So when you start masturbating, you don't notice how he's, you're like a soldier under training. In his camp, you don't see it as like that because there is the Bible says that men sin because the consequences are not immediate. If every time we sin, we we reap the consequences immediately, we will probably think twice about sinning. But like when those demons come, you masturbate it like nothing happened the first time, but it's opened you up to more demons. And what I always tell people is this: the demon of lust often comes with a demon of pride. So what will happen is that when you see people that are struggling in certain sexual sin, they don't want to tell anybody. There's a reason. It's not because they don't want to tell anybody. They, this, the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 that the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. Now, he, th- your mind is what allows you to think. So now, what, what happens is this. When those demons come in, they, they infiltrate the way you think. Mm. Part, of, part of what demons do is they, they intrude our thoughts. They, you are now you you are, you think you are thinking for yourself, but they are expressing themselves through your mind. Mm. So what I would say is this: the sh- the short, simple answer to that question is, purity is not just about what you do; it's about who you do it for, and mm. how you're doing it, right? So if someone is a virgin and they're just a virgin because they think mm. it's gonna bring them a good husband, then you're doing it for the wrong reason, right? So I think when we when we think about purity, we should think about it from the perspective that, number one, God knows me best. He knows how I'm wired. And I talked about this earlier on. Um, however old you are, so you are 30, 35, 40, right? You've been practicing whatever you've been practicing for 30 years. Yeah. The devil has been practicing whatever he has been practicing for how long? Over 2,000 years. Yeah. So even if forget spirituality. Mm. If you use your common sense, if you show up to the war with lust against the devil, who is going to win? Let's be honest. Who is going to win? Yeah. It's the devil. Yeah. And that's what, that's what those, those tricks, like, oh, I'm just going to masturbate, or I'm going to just watch porn, or I'm going to do this. Is you thinking that you're going to outsmart the devil in your path to purity. And the devil has you right where he wants you. Because the first step the devil 
um, takes with people when he wants to get them to sin is for them to put confidence in themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once you put confidence in you, you're like, I got her. Because mm -hmm. he knows the only way he can be defeated is through who? The Holy Spirit. Only Jesus could defeat the devil. So if you're trying to defeat sexual sin by yourself, you're already lost. Because the devil is going to outsmart you every single time. That's why we need God, and we don't want to open any door for him. Because any door he comes, he's not trying to live. He's going to bring his brothers and sisters. That's good. Um, and I was just going to add to that. I think also just being mindful like of triggers. I think we were talking about oh, yeah, that, right? Yeah. Like, you know being in a room with this person is going to trigger something, right? Like, don't do that. Like, you can't put yourself in the temptation and just say, oh, I didn't know what was going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, you have to be very conscious of that. And I think also, too, if you are dating or in a relationship, being mindful when you are going on a date, like, the time, right? Or like after, like, all right, you go home, I go home. Now, when she, when, when the night is over and she's like, oh, I don't want the night to end, or he say, you know, I don't want the night to end. Is ending right him, here. It's ending end right now. It's ending. Is it has ending? Let me And end. I will not see you again. Those are the tricks, right? It's true. You know, we we'll lie to ourselves, you know. We yeah, try to so trick our own mind. Exactly. So that's a good work. point. Um, we'll take a few more, and then I think we'll conclude this episode. But we, these are some really great questions, and I hope we it's have helping 15 minutes. you Why guys. You our time? Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Okay, sir. Um, all right, so the next question is, demonstrating the love and grace that God gives us to your partner that is struggling with detaching from things of the world. Mm, that's a good one. All right, so I will say this before I answer that question. I want to give priority to those that are in the room. If you want to come up and ask yes. your question, well, after this question, you can come up and ask. If not, we'll keep going through that. Mm -hmm. But what is the question again? Okay, so demonstrating the love and grace that God gives us to your partner that is struggling with detaching from things of the world. All right, so this is what I would say, right? I hope, um, if, that's really for a, a if that's for a married person, right, I'm going to address it next. But if you are single, right, this is what I always talk about, commitment. Don't commit to people that you know are not hard for Jesus. Now, no one is perfect. I didn't say perfect, but hot. When I'm, what I mean is, like, I think we asked um, um, Apostle Israel when he came here, and mm -hmm. we asked him, what is a good spiritual temperature for you to date somebody? He said, hey, hey, that is a very vague way to measure spiritual maturity. But he said, it's measure people's spiritual growth by their willingness to obey God. Mm. Right? That's, like, that's something that you can measure. Yeah. You can't measure, okay, are you hot? Are you cold? You can't measure it. No. But you can measure, okay, you repeatedly do something that God says you shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. Like I thought about like, for me, it's as simple as do you pay tithes? Mm. It's it like, okay, if I ask you one time, I'm not going to cut you off because you didn't pay tithes one time. But if six months later you're still not paying tithes, you're definitely not a wife for me. It's the little thing. It's not a, I'm not saying be perfect. But there is, the Bible says, he that, in the book of, I believe it's first or second John, it says, he that habitually and deliberately live in sin is not of God. Mm. So nobody's saying be perfect, but if you have chosen to disobey, you, you have made disobedient your lifestyle, don't commit to the person. And I think a lot of mm. times we make commitments, mm. hoping the person change. That's true. And there's the saying that goes, if they don't change to get you, they won't change to keep you. Ooh. You know? So, if you're not married, still with your commitments well. Mm. Don't commit to things, like Pastor Daniel always says it, right? Yeah. Throughout the tour, he, talk, he kept talking about capacity. capacity. Just because you love a Lamborghini doesn't mean you can afford it. That's right. So, take what you can afford. Now, if you're married, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you ain't got no choice. <laughs> if you're married, right? The, the the best biblical thing that God have said you should do is pray. pray. <laughs> now, you should have picked better, but we're not mm. going to say pick because you already picked. So now you just have to start praying. That's why, I, that's why I first address the people that are single. Don't go and make a commitment and you have to spend the rest of your life suffering. Mm. Stay with your commitments well. But if you've already made the commitment, pray for them. And what I would say is this. In addition to praying for them, be the best example of Jesus that they will mm. see. Because a lot of people, when they are praying for their partner, they are the antithesis of what their prayer looks like. Mm. Explain that. Explain so, that. so let's say you are praying for a man that, um, I, okay, I'll, I'll tell a story. There's a guy by name Lee Strobel. I'm not sure anybody knows of the guy. He's a pastor. So right now, Lee is one of the biggest evangelicals for Jesus. 
but he started off as an atheist. So he was one of those that didn't believe in Jesus. So one of those, like, anytime his wife wanted to talk about Jesus, like, please shut up, go to a different room, blah, blah, blah. But he said that when his wife gave her life to Jesus, she became more patient. Mm. So in scenarios where, he would, where she would talk back, usually she would be quiet. Like, she started exempli exemplifying the fruits of the Spirit. That it got to the point that he decided, I want to go and see why my wife doesn't talk back or why she's more gentle. That's what he, he said he went to church to investigate. He wanted Wahala. So he said when he, that's what brought him to church. Obviously, when the first time he came to church, it that's was good, on though. Easter. On Easter. That's why his, his ministry is strictly based on um, apologetics. Mm. So he said when the first time he came to church was on Easter, and they were talking about the proof of resurrection. And he said, that's how he came to church. And that's how today, he's one of the biggest sellers of, of Christian books. where he And travels the world talking about Jesus. But that all because a woman loved him more than he was, more than he was showing her. So a lot of times, the book Toxic Cycle talks about it, right? Where women want love to submit. And men want submission to love. And that often leads to a toxic cycle where everybody is waiting for somebody mm. to lead. Right now, obviously, I always say the man should lead. But if you're in a scenario and you're married and the man is not leading, doesn't mean that you should throw away your principles or throw away your responsibility to submit to him. That's why we again say pick better. Because even, even a man that is not following Jesus is going to demand submission of you. So you might as well pick him right so you can trust him and submit to him. That's good. All right, that's good. Um, so does anyone in the Does anybody have, have want to come yeah, up and ask a question? Get your robot shine. or something? Camera shine. All right. Oh, you do? Oh, you have somebody? Yeah, come up. Yeah, come on up. Okay. So hi, everyone. My name is Aura Olua, but you guys can call me Aura. Um, Aura. Yeah. So nice to meet you, Aura. Thank you. Um, one or two questions? Uh, you have more than one. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's just two. It's just no, two. no, I'm just... <laughs> Just messy <laughs> with Okay, so <laughs> what are you Ghanaian? I'm Nigerian. Okay, yeah, see. All right, just I just had I just had to, you know, I just had to I just had to make sure. I just had to, you know, sometimes they you know Ghanaians like to marry Nigerians, you know, so we have to make sure nowadays. Okay. It's okay, go ahead, please don't let it distract you. Okay, so my <laughs> so you have to get close to the mic. Okay. So my first question is um does submission apply while in dating so as like the woman should i submit to my boyfriend no okay hard uh, no you want me to explain yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean the, the the bible says wives submit to your husbands mm -hmm. right so that instruction is for in the context of what marriage now i do think in the dating phase you are supposed to exemplify qualities of a wife and qualities of a woman but I think, going back to, I did an episode called um, um, Game Time is Not for Practice Players. The reason why we often want a woman to submit in the dating phase is because we are not submitted to Christ. The, the formula is both of you are supposed to submit to Christ. Mm -hmm. A woman that submits to Christ, what a man should be looking for is a woman that is submitted to Christ. How well does she submit to God? Because what you are going to demand of her is what God demands of you. Mm -hmm. The problem with submission is women have women find it hard to submit a man with, to a man that is ungodly. Mm -hmm. Or a man that is now carrying his own part of the covenant. Mm -hmm. right? But you will not have to worry about that when you have the man that is submitted to Christ. Because he will never demand of you what Christ doesn't demand of you. Mm -hmm. So if you were already submitted to Christ in the dating phase... You wouldn't have that. You wouldn't have struggled that much. You still have to. It's still something you have to learn. But yeah, you don't have to submit to a man, to a man in the dating phase. But you have to submit to Christ. And in submitting to Christ, I think you will exemplify the qualities of a wife in that process. Okay, thank you. And then my next question is just about um, leading and purity. So I'm happy you mentioned, like you gave that tithe example, how you may meet someone and they're not on a certain path. So like. I believe that men should lead in like sexual purity, but let's say you meet a like self-proclaimed man of God mm -hmm. and he doesn't believe in waiting. So do you think we as women, it should be like, okay, that's a hard no, or like, okay, 
let me give this some time and see if he could change. I like how you said self proclaimed. <laughs> It's a lot of them out there. Uh, I, I love that. I love that. Listen, I'm big on the word responsibility, mm -hmm. right? So the word responsibility comes from two words, response and ability. And when you put it together, it means I have the ability to choose my response. And what I've learned in dating is I'm not responsible for somebody, but I'm responsible to them. Now, when you're dating a man that is not showing, remember we always say, Jesus told his disciples, the, the fruit will not fall far from, by their fruits, you shall know them. So you don't judge a man by what he says he is. You judge a man by what his action produces. Mm -hmm. So if he's, if, he's, if he's living in disobedience, you can't ignore his actions and go with his words. That's one. Two, because we are all imperfect, that's why I talk about stewarding our commitments. You can give someone grace while they grow. Why you are now, why they are growing, you know, be open to meeting other people that have grown. <laughs> you got it? Mm -hmm. So you can give them chance. No, you, you can give them chance to grow. And if you are still single when they have grown, okay. you guys can work it out. But don't ever make a commitment to a man that you know is going to be a threat to your work with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right? So why they are growing, let them keep growing. Go and find the ones that have grown. Okay. All right? Love you have us. more Thank questions? You. No. All right. Thank you. Like I've heard, guys. <laughs> now, one thing I always say is this, right? And she said something about men leading in purity, right? And the first question you asked was, should you submit to a man while you're dating? Mm. So that means in dating, he's not leading. You're leading yourself, and he's leading, your, leading himself. So if, if you guys, if, so you will often see women say things like, they will have sex with the man and say, oh, but he, I, he should be the one leading. Well, what is the problem? Did he force you? Did he rape you? <laughs> no, but I'm not even, I'm not absorbing the man of responsibility. Right. But when women say, oh, he should lead, doesn't mean that you don't have a choice. Mm. Yeah, if he's leading, great. But if he's not leading, you should lead by walking away from him. Yeah. Don't now sleep with him and blame him for not leading you right. That's all I'm saying. Everybody have to take what? Responsibility. Good. That's, right. good. That's good. All right. Our last, last question, question, guys. Yes. How do you maintain your own identity in a relationship without losing yourself? How do you what? How do you maintain your own identity in a relationship without losing yourself? All right. Um, I heard this saying. I think I said it in DC as well. A lot of people are looking for a life partner, but they have no life. Mm. Right. <laughs> you will. You will. Str you will struggle. Yeah. You will struggle in marriage if you are struggling in, sin in singlehood. Mm. A lot of people don't realize. People think marriage will cure. That's true. Marriage doesn't eliminate; mm -hmm. it illuminates. Mm -hmm. It makes it brings everything that was hidden to the light. So, if you don't know how to be a great woman of God, single, you will still not be a great woman of God, married, right? So, a lot of people are waiting. So, one of the best ways to make sure you maintain your individuality in marriage. Or, in, or when you get into a relationship, I also think, I always say this, we should eliminate that boyfriend and girlfriend nonsense that goes on in the church. It's not godly. But that is, that is a whole different episode. We, there's an episode on <laughs> that. that. So there's a, that is a whole different it. episode, right? But if you're married, one of the things I always say is, like, when you're single, right, mm -hmm. maintaining your tribe, mm -hmm. like, building community, right? Like, that, like, so, for example, like, your church most likely have a family, right? Your church could be your family. You like for me, I could tell you the different families that I have. I have, I have my boys that I work out with, right? I work out with my. I have a group of people I work out with. I have a group of people I play basketball with. I have a group of people I play soccer with. I have a group of people I do game night with. I have a group of people I do ministry with. So my life is not boring as a single man. So when I get married, it's not like I'm looking for something to do. I already have things to do. And the problem will happen if she doesn't have things to do now. She wants to follow me everywhere. Problem. Wait, so I have a question for that. I have a question, right? So, okay, like, so let's say for the girls too, right? For yeah. the ladies, you have your girls that you do your thing with, you know, and then you get married and your husband is like, well, I don't want you, you're doing too much. You're hanging out with these friends too much. You're married. You're single. You're a married woman. You're not single. So you shouldn't be doing the things you used to do. I mean, I think so you how did do you something. You, it's not going to be. Right. Like, how do you. Like, even, even now that I'm, even now that I'm single, right? Yeah. 
like I could get up like the other days. I mean, I don't see anybody that play, but okay, Stein, Stein is not here, Eddie. But like the other days, I'm playing ball at midnight. Mm. At midnight, there's gyms that are open. <laughs> Every girl's like, mm? there are gyms that are open right. 24 hours. I'm like, I'm I'm not sleepy. Instead of being home and sinning, let me go and play basketball. Right. Right. If I'm married, I can't go play basketball at midnight. Okay. I have to be wise. So your dynamic changes when you're married. It's not like you. Now, he, if he says, don't ever go hang out with your girlfriend, that's a problem. Mm, okay. But if he's saying there have to be a lot of balance. Balance, right. Like you, if, if a girl is single, she's going on five single girl trips mm -hmm. in a year. And she'll get married. <laughs> and she wants to still go on five girls trips a year. That's a problem. Mm. So I think there have to be a balance. And also, I think, why is he asking you not to hang out? Because mm -hmm. there are scenarios where maybe he believes your friends are ungodly. Mm. If, if he thinks your friends are ungodly, you should listen to him. You shouldn't just write him off because that's what you've been used to. Right. So I think um, seeking to understand the person yeah. as opposed to just trying to impose your way. Like if someone says, like even if my wife says, babe, I don't want you playing basketball with that person, I'll be like, why? Mm -hmm. Like I'm not just going to be like, oh, uh, why? If she has a good reason, mm -hmm. I'll have to reason with her. Okay. Yes. Right? So I think it, it goes both ways. It's about you know, creating balance. Cause so, like, still having your individuality, right? Like, still having time. And I think that's a good friend, point because yeah. I do think some people can smother. So they feel like now when you get married, it's like, okay, I have to always do things with my husband or always have to be with my wife. And it's just like you still want to have your own self of identity of outside of your partner. You know what I mean? So I think it is important to still have your friends. And then uh, there's also that thing when people say, like, oh, when people get married, then they don't, they cut off all their friends, they cut mm -hmm. off all their family, and then when something happens, then you want to bring everybody in the mix, you know? So I, I think that's important of just having that balance. I think it takes, maybe the way our culture goes nowadays is hard, but I do think it takes a community to make a marriage work. Yep. Like, that's why you want to be married into the right family, mm -hmm. the right church. The, like, it yeah. takes everybody, because... If you have no friends, and that guy starts chichi, who will tell you? That's true. Who will tell you when he starts misbehaving? Mm. Or who, when you guys have problems and you, you don't know anybody that he respects, mm. how can you reach him yeah. when he's unreachable? That's you know? good. So I do think individuality is good, but when you marry, you have to understand that you are now serving each other. So it's both of you have to take that into consideration. That's good.